January 10, 2020. The anomalous dugout was born. Since then, many things have happened. And now we are here, exactly three years later. To celebrate this occasion, as well as the arrival of 2023, I have prepared a Q&A, along with a few other surprises. There's a lot to go through, so let's begin. Welcome back. Thank you. It's true that I've been missing for a while, and for that I apologize. I have some plans for 2023. I'll try to be more active, but I cannot make any promises. Where do you live again? How old are you? Do you make any money from these videos? How old are you and what's your name? Do you wanna visit the exclusion zone someday? I'm 23 and I live in France. I don't make any money from my videos because they are not monetized. And yeah, I'd like to visit the exclusion zone someday. How did you discover the Stalker games? What made you interested in it? I found out about Stalker by watching YouTube videos, and I instantly felt drawn to the zone. The setting, the story, and all the mysteries surrounding it are what caught up my attention. Plus, I have a thing for all the single-player first-person shooter games. If you had to describe yourself, would you fit some of the French stereotypes? I would probably fit a few of them, but on the other hand, I also break some. I mean, I'm talking in English right now. Apparently, for a French person, that's unheard of. Which character from the trilogy you think represents you the most? I think Lefty is a good representation of who I could be if I went to the zone. Not intelligent enough to be a scientist himself, but still helping out the local science team in their quest to study the zone. Was it easy for you to play Stalker, or did you have to try again later at least once? It wasn't so difficult for me. Once I started playing, I never stopped. I like challenging games, so maybe that's why. If you ever got to the wish granter, what would you wish for? And how do you think it would grant you said wish? The more I think about this, the more I cannot decide what I would want to ask. If I was to reach the wish granter, I would probably stand there like, I don't even know what I want to ask. Biggest pet peeve in the vanilla games. Probably the SOS signals from random squads in Clear Sky. I remember trying to film the cutscene over the bridge to Limansk for a video, and the loner's SOS would always ruin the whole scene by playing over Lebedev's transmission. There was nothing I could do which was particularly infuriating. If the zone was a real place here on Earth, would you pack your vodkas and gas mask to visit the place? Oh no, realistically, I probably would not survive a single day in the zone. Have you ever dreamt that you were in Stalker? Yeah, I think so, but I don't really remember. What do you think of Roadside Picnic? What do you think of the Stalker film and books? Roadside Picnic and the Stalker film are huge classics, that's for sure. However, I haven't read the fan-made Stalker books. Have you ever played Codename Outbreak? I know about it, but I haven't played it yet. Did you play Half-Life? Favorite game series apart from Stalker? Yes, I played Half-Life, and I think it is my favorite game series apart from Stalker. All of these questions are Stalker related, which is fair enough, you being a Stalker channel, but how are you? How's the family? Is friends nice this time of year? How was your day today? How are you feeling today? Well, first of all, thanks for asking. I'm doing good, today is a nice day. Although, it's quite cold and dark here at this time of year. A lot of rain. You know, typical winter, I guess. How much can you bench? Um, sorry, I don't know. How many girlfriends do you have? What kind of question is this? Obviously, none. Yo, I'm new to the whole stalker thing and I just played Anomaly this month. The videos you've made really helped me learn a lot about the lore of the franchise. May I also say they make a great background sound as I play the game. 
Thank you for your fine contributions to this community, fellow stalker. I'm glad my videos were helpful to you, but at the same time this makes me feel like I failed. It has come to my attention that because of my videos, many new players decide to completely skip playing the original games and jump straight into mods such as Anomaly. If that's your case, then I'm sorry for your loss. Where do you get your stalker lore and information? Mainly from the games themselves. Almost all there is to know is experienced from inside the games. A few exceptions are the design documents, which can give you a better understanding of cut content, and the wiki that sometimes can help, especially the Russian wiki. Yet I have come to mistrust the wiki. Checking the sources yourself is always better. What happened to that dwarf thing you were doing a while back? That was an event from my Discord server. People who managed to find the hidden door were given a unique role of door finder. How do you feel knowing that there are people from all around the world watching your videos? That feels great! I made this channel specifically in English, so that as many people as possible would be able to understand it. Regardless of where you are from, you should be able to enjoy Stalker, and you will always be welcome here. Do you plan on covering modded content in future videos? I don't think I will cover mods because it's too big of a task for me. I'm not the type of person to do things halfway, so if I start making videos about mods, it will turn into a never-ending rabbit hole. Besides, there are already plenty of other people covering mods. Any chance of covering in-depth content that was made before Shadow of Chernobyl? Pretty much during the Oblivion Lost days, locations, weapons, etc. Same answer here with the cut content. I don't think I have what it takes to get into it because it's such a huge undertaking. But who knows, maybe I'll change my mind one day. You should do a video about Demon Sidorovich in all the Shadow of Chernobyl builds. Well, if you believe this is a topic worth making a video about, then what about making it yourself? I started my channel with such a mindset. I'm sure you can do it too. Will you be making more character profiles of the people in Stalker? Would like to see bios of Barkeep, Nimble, Cardon, and the crew that Tyrev had with him on the trip to Pripyat. The thing with Stalker NPCs is that they have very little, if any, character development. Even the main protagonists are almost unknown to us. So as much as I could make videos about these characters, unfortunately there is not a lot to say. Do you plan to branch off and try other heavy lore games? No, my channel will remain about Stalker exclusively. Is the making of your content very mentally draining? And how do you cope with it, other than taking breaks, of course? Honestly, it depends. Some videos are much more enjoyable to make than others, and motivation plays a large role in how you will feel about making them. I consider myself a workaholic with a relatively strong mental fortitude, so videos themselves were never really the problem. The times of struggle come when outside factors start to impact the production of videos, such as real-life work and responsibilities. In a sense, making videos is my way to cope with real life, and not the other way around. Is it hard to be a YouTuber? What things do you need to know before starting? Much like any experience, making videos has its ups and downs. You will have to be strong and control your emotions, so that disappointment, frustration and hate don't get to you. I think an important thing to do before starting is setting a goal for yourself. It does not have to be anything huge, like a million subs or anything, rather a simple, clear and reasonable goal which will seem reachable and will motivate you. And as you progress, you can change your goal, add new ones, and so on. Ask yourself this, 
What do you want to achieve with your channel? This is how you will keep going in the long run. A channel run without any goals in mind risks not going anywhere. Why did you exactly choose to create stalker content? Why not some other game? There are two reasons. First, the stalker games are my favorite. Second, I thought they lacked many videos. For years I've been searching for some specific topics about stalker on the internet, only to discover that such topics were not covered. So I decided to do it myself. Are you planning on playing, trying out new games, checking their lore and theories and or making fan theories? Not a chance. Stalker is my stronghold, it will remain that way. How has Stalker changed your life as a whole? Also, what would your perfect Stalker game be like? From the moment I learned about Stalker, it has never left me. In the last decade, I spent thousands of hours playing the games, thinking about them, writing concepts and stories, and now making videos. All of this takes time and energy, which I could not dedicate to other things. I dropped other hobbies and activities to be able to continue on like this. I guess you could say it did change my life. As for the perfect stalker game, I have been dreaming about it for a long time. I even designed some parts of it. Unfortunately, I am no modder nor developer. I would have loved to show you one day, but I don't think we will ever see it. Which of the main characters do you like the most and why? Who is your favorite protagonist and faction from all three games? Which faction would you join? My favorite is the Mark Twain, regardless of him actually being Strelok or not. I think his resilience and his will to push through hell to find the truth against all odds are unmatched. As for factions, I prefer the scientists, because I would myself like to study the zone. Which side character is your favorite? Which supporting character is your favorite? Since I really like scientists, Professor Sakharov is my favorite. But I'm sure you also have a favorite NPC. That is why I got the idea to organize a tournament to find out which NPC is the most favorite. Starting tomorrow, I will make daily YouTube posts in the shape of polls, where you will be able to vote. The rules are simple. Vote for your favorite NPC. The structure of the tournament looks like this. The most popular NPCs have been selected and put randomly in 8 groups of 4. In each group, the two most voted for NPCs will move on to the next stage, where they will compete in one-on-one -on -one matches up to the finals. I've already made an announcement explaining this, and where you can discuss which NPC you think will win it all. Also, if this type of small event is successful, maybe I can do more with other things, such as mutants, anomalies, artifacts... Anyway, back to the Q&A. If you could add your custom faction in the series, what would it be? I already created such a faction in my campfire stories. It is called Blackout, a group of professional stalkers who almost exclusively carry out their missions at night. Do you prefer duty or freedom? Duty or freedom? Time to choose. Yes. Favorite side quest? I think the Bloodsucker Lair in Call of Pripyat. Which is your favorite area from the base games? Your favorite location in all of Stalker and why? Favorite moment in the game? What was your favorite mission in the whole series? What's your memorable moment in playing the Stalker games so far? My favorite location, and coincidentally my favorite moment from the series, is reaching the southern part of the power plant and making your way to the sarcophagus. This moment is really special, because you realize that you have made it to the very center of the zone. The area is huge and fully explorable, 
filled with strange anomalies and rare artifacts. Meanwhile, the largest battle in the entire series rages on between the military and the monolith, and a gigantic blowout is triggered on top of all of that. You can't do much more memorable than that. Which X-Lab is your favorite and why? X-18 is my favorite because it brought so much to the story. It's the place where you find out about the experiments conducted down there, the creation of mutants, and so on. Also, it's very well designed and usually leaves a mark on the players. When you experience the game for the first time, there is a before and after X-18. If you could design an X-Lab, what would it contain? In my opinion, a good X-Lab design needs to tick some boxes. To begin with, the secrets it contains are important enough to push the story forward. Then, what you see in the lab has to hint at some of the things which happened there, while also raising other questions and overall leaving a lot unanswered. Lastly, it has to feature stuff you usually don't come across in other parts of the zone. Rare mutants, anomalies and artifacts, but also valuable loot, strange machinery and so on. All in all, X-18 ticks all of these boxes. Favorite mutant in the series? Which one is cuter, pseudo-giant or flesh? My favorite mutant is the pseudo-giant, because it's rare and powerful, but most importantly, it's terrifying and grotesque at the same time. Also, its origins are shrouded in mystery. Therefore, I'll say that the pseudo-giant is cuter. Coolest, most useful glitch in stalker games in your opinion? Mm, the elevator glitch. It's ridiculous yet extremely useful for speedruns and such. What is your favorite stalker weapon? Do you have any preferred weapon? What's your favorite weapon from all three games? What is your favorite weapon and suit in Stalker? My favorite weapon is Strelok's SGI 5K from Call of Pripyat, because of its legendary status and effectiveness. My favorite suit is the Seva, because it offers good protection and allows to use all five artifact slots. NATO or Soviet weapons? Favorite round between 556, 545, 939, and 7.62 by 54. In Stalker, I usually prefer NATO weapons over most Soviet weapons, with the exception of 9 by 39 weapons. So I guess 9 by 39 is my favorite caliber overall. What's your favorite food? Bread, obviously. What is your least favorite anomaly in the game? I'm not sure if everyone considers it an anomaly, but I don't like teleports or teleporters. Among all the amazing things anomalies do, the ability to teleport is the only one which I feel does not belong in the setting of Stalker. What is your favorite obscure aspect about any of the three Stalker games? I really like the mysteries behind the humanoid mutants. How are they created exactly? How come there's always more of them, even though plenty are killed? How do they survive without food inside the underground locations? To what level can they still interact with humans? We do have some hints, bits and pieces of answers, but no real evidence or direct confirmation about any of this. What's your favorite Kanye song? And ironically, I don't think I've ever heard any of his songs. Who are your favorite stalker YouTubers, and who would you recommend? Apart from the obvious Russian people like Vandalay or Zanzax, there are a lot of small channels with very good stalker videos. Here are a few. Horned Reaper, Vanya Important, Zone Operator, Stalker Info, Into the Zone, Guide Stalker, and more recently, Strelok. What are your favorite games that were heavily inspired by Stalker? I'm sorry, but I don't think any of my other favorite games were inspired by Stalker. 
What is your favorite stalker theory and why? One of my favorite theories is the whole final day killed Fang scenario, which I explained in my iceberg. Basically, according to this theory, the final day faction was created by remnants of the Clear Sky faction after it fell apart, explaining why they have similar beliefs and behaviors. The members of Last Day would have continued to hunt down the members of Strelok's group, and that is why they would have killed Fang. In an act of revenge, Ghost assassinated their leader, as described by Barkeep. I really like this theory because it ties a lot of loose ends together in a really smooth way. Understood the zone IRL covers three countries, Ukraine, Russia and Belarus, and given its position relative to the CNPP, could Zatan actually be within Belarus? No, I don't think so. Zatan is located right above Pripyat, which remains far from the Belarusian border. Is it possible that there could be stalkers coming from other countries outside the 15 member states of the former USSR, Mercs aside? I mean, yeah, probably. As long as you know a bit of the language, I don't see why people from other countries would not be able to enter the zone. It may be more difficult for them, but trespassing and living in the zone is already a challenge in itself, so if you are really motivated, it could be possible. Do you think the northern part of the zone has different factions than the part of the zone where the stalker games are set? Yeah, definitely. Of course it could also have similar factions, like loners and bandits, but also new factions. We actually already know one such group, the so-called druids, or shamans, which are rumored to come from the Belarusian side of the zone. Could you explain how different factions think of, view, and interact with each other, and why this results in them being either friendly or hostile in-game? Believe it or not, I actually wrote a script for such a video. However, I was not pleased with the result, so I cancelled the production. This topic is much more complex than what appears at first glance. Who knows, maybe I'll try again to cover it in the future. What do you think is the general message and philosophy Stalker is trying to convey to the player? I think the world of Stalker can teach us a lot of interesting lessons. However, the biggest message that I can see is a warning. A warning to not mess with forces we do not understand. Science can and will go too far. This is what happened in Stalker, resulting in the creation of the Zone, our very own man-made hell. How important to the overall game, lore, franchise would you say that each of the three OG games are? Shadow of Chernobyl is the most important, having laid the basis for everything. The other games were only expansions of what Shadow of Chernobyl had established, and many of the best mods were made for Shadow of Chernobyl. Then, Call of Pripyat. As a sequel, it wrapped up the story. And as the most polished game out of the three, it also spawned some of the best mods. Finally, Clear Sky. Unfortunately, it's less important because it's a prequel, and it has way less mods than the other two games. What would the zone be like if the sea consciousness wasn't destroyed? Do you think they'd ever succeed in closing the Noosphere Rift? Most likely the zone would be similar to what it was in Shadow of Chernobyl, quite stable, with very few emissions. However, I do not think they would have been able to close the rift in the Earth's Noosphere, at least not without many, many more years of research. Do you think it's physically possible to destroy the zone as duty wants, or is it nearly physically impossible since it would release more and more dangerous emissions until it's not a threat? I do not think the zone can simply be destroyed. Maybe the rift in the Earth's snow sphere can be repaired, but it would require many years of extensive research and experiments. 
Either way, the zone can be more or less contained, which is better than nothing. Alright man, I'm sorry but I'm not reading all of that in the video. I will, however, respond to your comment, so no worries. What is for you the biggest mystery of the zone, and do you hope of ever discovering the answers for it? For me, the biggest mystery is the explanation behind how the zone actually works. What are the mechanisms of the noosphere? What went wrong during the Sea Consciousness's experiment? How does the rift in the Earth's noosphere manifest in the form of emissions, anomalies and artifacts? What are the scientific explanations for all of this? We have made a lot of theories and assumptions about such topics in the past, yet nothing is really known for certain. We might learn a few more details in the upcoming game, but I think that we will largely remain ignorant about these mysteries, simply because the creators of Stalkers themselves most likely don't have the answers. What is your view on how the zone should be treated? My views are similar to the scientists. The zone should be studied for its wonderful properties. However, unlike some professors, I am also very well aware of the dangers involved. Science fucked up once. We'll try to avoid another disaster. If Major Dektyrev was a mercenary, Strelok a soldier, and Scar a monolithian, what would happen change in the timeline? Damn, that's a difficult question. I guess the mercs would have got their hands on some of the zone's secrets, while the military and monolith would have an epic battle at the CNPP for control over the center of the zone. Hard to say who would win, though. How would you explain the glory of the zone and monolith to outsiders? We thank you, O Monolith, for revealing the cunning plans of your enemies to us. May your light shine down on the souls of the brave soldiers who gave their lives in service to your will. Onward, warriors of the Monolith, avenge your fallen brothers. Blessed as they are in their eternal union with the Monolith, bring death to those who've spurned the holy power of the Monolith. If you could change something in one of the Stalker games, what would you change? I'd like to remove the teleporters from the ending sections, in Shadow of Chernobyl and Clear Sky. As I've said earlier, I don't like them. To me, they don't fit in Stalker. What scares you the most in all Stalker games? What is the most frightening thing in the zone and why? Anything related with Psy emissions is pretty scary. Psy fields, the emitter from X16, the brain scorcher, and controllers, all are things you want to stay away from. Turning into a zombie is probably one of the worst fates one can get in the zone. A lot of specific questions here. I will answer them directly on YouTube. Any good explanation as to why bandits wearing Adidas can survive five shotgun shells to the chest on normal difficulty? And where are my bullets going? Just like the mutants, bandits have developed super strength after spending so much time near radiation and anomalies. As for your bullets, they simply miss their targets, because accuracy in these games is terrible. A loner squad sets off to the center of the zone at 3 km per hour. A monolith squad sets off to intercept them one hour later at 5 km per hour. How long will it take for the monolith to catch up to the loners? Let's call T the time spent during this chase. The distance traveled by the loners is equal to 3 plus 3 times T. The distance traveled by the monolith is 5 times t. Assuming the two groups start from the same location and use the same path, we can equalize these two equations to calculate t, which turns out to be equal to 1 hour and 30 minutes. By reintroducing this value for t in the equations, we can then calculate the distance at which they will meet, 7.5 kilometers. 
To conclude, the monolith squad will catch up with the loner squad before they reach the center of the zone, if they depart at least 7.5 kilometers away from their destination. And it will take 1 hour and 30 minutes. What if the monolith are right? What if we really are against the change of the world to the better? As I understand it, you are asking if the goal of the sea consciousness to remove all negative emotions is actually the right thing to do. Personally, I think they were wrong, but it's only my opinion. It is indeed quite a complex philosophical question. Maybe we can ask each and every one of you watching this video. What do you think about this? Please leave a comment with your insight. It will be interesting to read what the other stalkers have to say. My question is if the sea consciousness scientists actually know what they're talking about. The zone does not react in any way the scientists predict, and the zone itself is the product of them cluelessly stumbling about. What indications are there to say the scientists aren't still clueless when it comes to the zone? Well, yeah, you are correct. Even the people behind the creation of the zone can't seem to be able to understand it, at least not fully. The sea consciousness does display some form of control over the zone. They use mutants and anomalies to their advantage, conduct large brainwashing operations, and most of all are able to somewhat contain emissions. However, this control remains very limited, and we don't have any proof that they actually know what they are doing. I think they definitely understand the zone better than anyone else, but this knowledge is still lacking. How do you not clip in the games? I use the developer's console. Let me show you. First, let's open the console. I'm not sure which key it is on a QWERTY keyboard, because I use an AZERTY keyboard, but I'm sure you will be able to find it. Then type demo underscore record and the name of the demo you want to take. Usually I use numbers, like 1. You are now in free camera. You can move around, but it is not really a good scene just yet. To create a scene, you should press the spacebar in the locations where you want your camera to move through. For example, here, 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 and here. Then close the camera with escape, go again in the console and type demo play and the name you gave to your demo. There you go! What stalker mods have you played? I played a lot of mods. Here's a list of those I can remember. Lost Alpha, Oblivion Lost Remake, OGSC, Gold Sphere, Wind of Time, Misery, Narodnaya Solyanka, Stalker Soup, Joint Pack 2, NLC 7, New Arsenal 5, Special Anomaly, Call of Chernobyl, Mutant Uprising, Last Day, Road to the North, Legend Returns, Call of the Zone, Dead Air, Demos Ven, Stason 174, and Anomaly. Top 3 favorite mods and why? Oblivion Lost Remake for the cut content, Lost Alpha DC for the maps, Call of Chernobyl for the opportunity to create your own stalker stories. Do you like more arcadey mods or more misery style punishing mods? I think I prefer mods which stay close to the original games. Do you like soup mods for Stalker, specifically Stalker Soup? I did enjoy a few soup mods, and I did finish Stalker Soup. What do you think about the popular mod Anomaly, and why do you think more people are getting into Anomaly these days without even playing the vanilla games? What do you think about Anomaly and the mod packs for Anomaly? How do you feel about Stalker Anomaly? What do you think about people who claim that Anomaly is the best stalker mod? I actually wrote a script for a video titled The Problem with Anomaly. However, I will probably never publish it. 
Instead, it is planned that other stalkers and I will discuss the case of Anomaly in a soon-to-be-made podcast. Still, here's a quote I used before, which I think sums up the situation pretty well. Being introduced to the stalker franchise through Anomaly is like starting to read a book from the very last chapter. You may enjoy the finale, but it has little chance to make sense and will always feel incomplete without the groundwork provided by the previous chapters. As for people who claim that Anomaly is the best stalker mod, I will only respect their opinion if they have played other great mods as well. Do you like hip? Would you like to see more sci-fi concepts or more realism-based things in next games? I think the original games managed to find a good balance between futuristic, fantastic elements and more realistically grounded elements. Except for the teleporters, that was a step too far for me. So I hope Stalker 2 does not take the sci-fi concepts much further than that. If you had to pick one thing from the cut content of Shadow of Chernobyl to put back into the final lost game, what would it be and why? If you could carry over a single thing from the build cut versions of Stalker into Stalker 2, then what would it be? What cut content would you like to see added to the new Stalker game? I would like to bring back the counterpart concept that was cut from Clear Sky. The idea was that the zone would copy some stalkers, which would bring chaos and confusion among the inhabitants of the zone. For example, Scar himself would have been copied during the big mission. We were to play as the real Scar, while our counterpart was doing other things elsewhere in the zone. Would you like Stalker 2 to be a bit more hardcore compared to the older games? What's your opinion on a 2-4 to four player co-op mode in Stalker 2? Do you think the war in Ukraine will change how the army slash military will be portrayed in Stalker 2? How do you think modern events will affect the Stalker series' future and possibly its lore? The original Stalker games were quite easy for me, so I would not mind the game being a little bit more difficult. About the co-op mode, the developers have already revealed that it will not happen. I respect this decision. Now, on the topic of the war and how it will influence the final product, this I cannot say for sure. Obviously, the development has already been badly affected by these events. Also, the portrayal of the military had already started to change in Call of Pripyat compared to the previous games so I would not be surprised if GSC can pull off a smooth transition of the faction into a less antagonistic group. As for the lore, I hope it does not incorporate too much of the real-life events. Stalker is set in an alternate universe, and it's a video game after all. Immersing yourself in this world is supposed to be an escape from reality. Do you think lore points from the Stalker games will be explored or answered in Stalker 2? And if so, what would you like them to answer? Yes, I think some questions will be answered. Remember when I talked about the mysteries behind the humanoid mutants? Well, we saw a fully working X-Lab in one of Stalker 2's trailers. So, that will most likely be connected. Other than that, I'd like to actually see how anomalies block certain paths. We know that stalkers cannot access some areas because of anomalous activity, but we've never really seen what kind of anomalies prevent traveling through the zone. The ones we meet in the games can obstruct some small passages, but not much more. Do you think the vehicles that were originally meant to be in Shadow of Chernobyl are pronounced dead, or could they appear in Stalker 2? I believe there won't be drivable vehicles in Stalker 2, but this is just my personal opinion. We have no information on that just yet, so I have nothing to back up my claim. 
Do you think Stalker 2 will live up to expectations? No, simply because different groups of people have different and contradictory expectations which cannot be met simultaneously. GSC cannot please everyone, and they will have to make some choices. The last trailer has shown exactly that. Whatever happens, there will always be someone who is disappointed. What do you want Stalker 2 to have? Old factions? Old famous people? Answers would be nice to be seen. We already know that Stalker 2 will feature old factions. It would be nice to see a few familiar faces, but I don't have anyone specific in mind. However, I'm really curious to see if they will add new groups and what they will do with them. For now, we only learned about the Ward, which is pretty much a faction of people protecting the scientific operations in the zone. They were featured heavily in the last trailer, so it seems they will be very important to the story. What features would you like to see in the upcoming Stalker? There's a lot of things I would like to see, and I don't think we have time to list them all. So instead, I'll just tell you about a few ideas I had in mind that I believe could be interesting to see. First of all, I'd like emissions to actually change the entire zone, as it should be. After each emission, anomalies would change places, some disappear and others spawn in previously safe areas. The A-Life system would also have to react to this, with the mutants changing their nest locations and migrating, factions fighting for new territories, and so on. I know this is very ambitious, but if this is done with enough randomization, or at least enough variables, it would ensure that even the most experienced players don't know what dangers they will face, and thus provide infinite replayability to the game. Then I would really like to see an improvement on the side of Psy emissions. I mentioned earlier that being under the effect of Psy emissions is one of the most terrifying things that can happen to you in the zone, so I believe the in-game effects should reflect that. A graphical overhaul of the Psy effects will probably be in the game, however I'd also like to see a return of the Psy keybar concept. Basically, Psy emissions and Psy attacks from mutants, such as the controller, can drain your character's psyche rather than straight up removing your health. If your psyche bar reaches zero, you die, even if your health bar is not still depleted. This would make a true separation between physical and psychic damage, and render Psy emissions more dangerous as regular healing items would be useless against them. On a more technical aspect, I think GSC can reduce the dissatisfaction of the fanbase by making the game very customizable. For example, we saw in the latest trailer how the heads-up display will look like, and the reactions were divided. Some liked the new style of the heads-up display, while others hated it. My suggestion is to allow the player to choose a heads-up display style between a few options, ranging from modern to classic old stalker. A similar level of customization could be available for other details in the game, such as item animations, appearance of the inventory and PDA, and so on. This would be, in my opinion, a good way to please the most people possible. Would Strelok appear in the next Stalker franchise? Do you think we will probably see Major Detyref and the other characters from the past games in this sequel? I think Strelok will be there and have an influence on the story, one way or another. As for the other characters, all I can say is don't get your hopes too high. We know that Stalker 2 is set several years after the previous games, maybe a decade later, in fact, so it's possible many former stalkers died or left the zone. It would not surprise me if almost none of the original characters return. After Stalker 2 is completed, would you like to see GSC revive the Oblivion Lost concept? 
No, not really. I think GSC should move on from the past and focus towards the future. Do you think Stalker 2 should be similar to the classic Soviet novels in terms of theme, presentation, horror and story? I'm not sure what novels you exactly refer to. If Stalker 2 is similar to the previous Stalker games in that regard, that's all good for me. What do you think will happen to exoskeletons? Will they be treated like in Fallout 4 where they became more of a tool than an armor? We've yet to see exoskeletons appear in Stalker 2 promotional material, so I can't say for sure, but I think they will remain as full armors rather than just a tool. Do you think they should allow crack to be smoked as a way to reduce radiation and side damage in Stalker 2? No, there is no need for that. We already have other items which have these effects, such as vodka, anti-rads and cyblock. Do you already have a PC for Stalker 2? Your PC specs and what you will change to run Stalker 2 when it comes. I do not have a PC yet for Stalker 2. Currently I have an average gaming laptop. I don't even know its specs to be honest. As long as it does the job, that's all I need. I'm actually planning to buy a new computer when Stalker 2 comes out so that I can play it. Do you think Stalker 2 can be better than Stalker Anomaly? I don't think these two can be compared. One will be an official, fully-fledged Stalker game, and the other is a fan-made Stalker-themed free-play modification. Do you think Stalker 2 will be linear like Metro, or will it be free roam? It has already been revealed that the game will be a seamless open world. Will you make videos about Stalker 2 when it will be released? I cannot answer this question yet. We simply don't have enough information about the game. But I believe the future will give us answers. Well, we did it. I think all the questions have been answered. But if you somehow still have something to ask me, make sure to post a comment under this video and I will respond. I hope you found this video interesting and entertaining, but now it is time for me to leave. Thank you for watching, and good hunting, stalkers.